great day in Georgia here. Uh, sun's out, little warm, but uh, it'll be getting awful hot out here in a little while. But uh, uh, anyway, I've got an air conditioner out here and it, it tries to keep up, but not too well. Anyway, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, lumber. And uh, I, I had a question from a guy, uh, he emailed me, uh, asking me, how do you quarter saw wood? What is quarter sawn wood and, and how, do you, how do you do it? Well, I think he actually wanted me to do it with a chainsaw, but I'm not gonna actually cut cutting it today. Uh, normally, any kind of milling type stuff I do, I just do right here on the bandsaw with short pieces. Uh, but you can do the same thing on a bandsaw as you can with a sawmill. It's the same thing. Uh, you know, you're just kind of limited to the lengths and and uh, the size wood that you can do, really, just uh, by whatever bandsaw you have. But, uh, and also, I've, I've acquired me an old smoker that uh, I'm gonna start turning into a kiln and uh, so I can dry wood and stuff. I do cut a lot of my own lumber and stuff like that when I can get uh, cherry and oak and walnut, stuff like that. I'll turn some of those logs that I cut down into uh, lumber. Uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll split it with my chainsaw and then I'll just come back to the bandsaw and start, start running, running it. And, uh, and then I, hopefully I'll get my kiln built and I can put it in there so it can dry a little bit quicker. Also, I can put ball blanks in there or you know things like that and help them dry a little quicker too. But uh, let's go ahead and get started and uh, I'll explain what quarter sawing is and, uh, and you know a couple of different methods that, that you can use to get it. I have a buddy who owns a sawmill and, uh, and he's cut a good bit of wood for me uh, whenever I would have great big logs and wanted to turn it into lumber he'll, he'll cut it up for me and uh, a lot of this information came from him but I have uh, I also have some some books and things that I've that I've had for a long time you know and they kind of explain this too so uh, but anyway we'll get started on that I've got a couple diagrams and things like that I want to show you and then we'll get We'll, uh, we'll talk about it. Alright. Okay. Well, here we go. I've got a, a plain sawn piece and I have a quarter sawn piece. We'll start out talking about plain sawn. That's where you just take a log and you just start slicing lumber right off the top of it. This is kind of what you end up with. You end up, as you start cutting... You know you're you're more parallel to the grain and as let's see make sure I'm in there and as you get on closer to the middle your grain gets more parallel but this is all plain sawn that they, they they really don't orient the, the wood but cut in one direction uh, a lot of times they'll cut a square out of the log and then they'll just start slicing and slicing and slicing until they get all the way through the log uh, this is what most lumber is. Most lumber is plain sawn. Uh, it's cheaper, but one of the disadvantages to it is that it's not as stable. It has a tendency to want to cup and check and things like that with you as it dries. Uh, so you have to be careful with plain sawn wood. Now quarter sawn wood, which is like this, uh, let's see if you can see. You can see how the grain all runs perpendicular with the faces. Okay, now especially in oak, you get you get these rays that you can see that really make it pop. Uh, really make the wood pop when you uh, when you make furniture or something out of it. But the grain always is always perpendicular to the faces with quarter sawn grain, which makes it very stable. Uh, I'm not saying it won't check when it's drying but it can uh, you know a little bit but it's a lot more stable and uh, the shrinkage is not as bad across the grain either when you do that okay so we'll I'll move into this the way 
the way I was, uh, if this was a log and somebody was going to cut it up for me, this is, uh, I'm going to show how they would plane saw it first. Now, mo most likely, they're going to make slices on the top, just like this. It'll be a slice, just like that. And they'll, they'll just make different slices, just like this. And then they'll come and make a, a perpendicular cut to that, just like this. And that'll give them a square surface there for their, for their sawmill. Once they do that, they'll just continue on. And they'll just cut here, and here, and here, all the way down. And that, that is known as, as plain sawn wood. Okay, when, you, when it's cut in this orientation, it's plain sawn. But if you notice, as you get here near the center, you have essentially quarter sawn wood right here in the, in the middle. But only one or two, you know, boards, and then and then your angle begins to change, you know, uh, your grain angles begin to change from being perpendicular to being actually parallel as you get on up here. That board right there, when you cut this board out, that grain is running parallel to the face, almost. So. <clears throat> This method is the way most lumber is cut, but also it is the most unstable and uh, it will check and crack and stuff like that and cup with you uh, if, it's not, if it's not dried properly. Uh, now when I get on into like quarter sawing, oh and, and I'll show you an example of, of what I have for the other. I cut this face the other day out of a log and this is a big face but when I was cutting bowl blanks I got this face let me back that up so you can see maybe I can get far enough back okay now this came straight from the middle of the log I cut two big bowl blanks I cut one here the log was the log was this way I cut one face here and I cut the pith out you can see where most all the cracking is right there and then I cut this face now I can come back and cut this out and I'll have two boards okay and there will be basically quarter sawn boards because the grain runs perpendicular to the faces every time I cut bowl blanks I end up with some of these uh, quarter sawn pieces you know I didn't actually go through the process of quarter sawing but I end up with the same result now if you're wanting to quarter saw a board or a log uh, quarter sawing takes a lot more uh, it, there's, it's a lot more labor intensive to do it but basically you're going to start out and you're going to quarter the log you're going to cut it down the middle here and down and down the middle here okay we're going to start out in quarters all right and then we're going to start cutting each quarter at an angle perpendicular to the grain which is you have a little wedge here and then you have a board here and 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 then another wedge and that is quarter sawing and you'll do each quarter that that same way it keeps it keeps the grain oriented perpendicular to the face. Each one of them will be cut the same, the same way, just like that. And uh, you can see how this, this will be uh, more difficult to cut. 
but you will end up with quarter sawn wood and especially with oak like i was saying with a medullary raise or med med medullary raise or whatever you call it uh which it, it's figure that's that's in that wood and it really it really pops and uh you can you can distinguish quarter sawn oak uh, right off the bat just by seeing those rays in the wood but anyway this is how you quarter saw that's how quarter sawing is done uh, I don't do it really myself because generally after I do my bowl blanks I end up with uh, a good bit of that quarter sawing wood and a, a lot of my economy bowls which I use from these faces uh, a lot of my economy bowls are made from quarter sawn wood. But uh, this is the actual process for quarter sawn wood. So if there are any questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask, but uh, this is actually pretty simple. It's pretty simple. You just have to, have to uh, set your saw up to cut that way. All right, well, let's come out here and look at my kiln. <laughs> or what's going to be my kiln and we'll go through what I'm going to do to it okay well you are now looking at what is going to become my kiln for drying wood or drying lumber and bowl blanks and things like that it was an old smoker that uh, my dad had and, uh, and my brother and they gave it to me uh, the this doesn't work anymore but I've got one I'm gonna put in it and uh, and I'll but I've got a lot of room in here to, to put to put lumber in and uh, and bowls and things like that and there's already an opening in the bottom I don't know if you can see that yeah okay that opening right there uh, is actually kind of essential to the way this thing works and I'll explain that in just a little a little while but this is my kiln and uh, I'll explain to you kind of what I'm what I'm gonna be doing what I'm kind of what I'm, I'll explain to you what I'm gonna be doing with this Okay, I've got control for my airflow. You don't need a lot of airflow through these things. You want it to stay hot inside. So, uh, so I just you have enough airflow for the moisture and all to kind of escape. All right, I've just got me some strips cut. They're about three quarter by three quarter. Got one layer of wood in here. Now I'm just going to lay these strips in. And that will allow, and this is a cherry that I've cut. It came from a cherry tree. That, uh, and this is a pecan here. 
but you want to put a, a space between each layer so the air can move. I've, I've had this cut for about a month, so it's uh, some of it's actually already started to kind of warp a little bit, but that's okay. I keep a space between each one. And uh, but I'll keep a space between each layer. That way air can kind of freely move throughout the, the whole system. I'll make sure there's at least three pieces of wood or three strips per piece. That way it's supported in the middle also. Supported on the ends and supported in the middle. And this is all, like I said, this is all cherry here. This down here is oak. It's actually quarter saw from the center. The good thing is with these strips, I just cut them right out of just right out of old scrap wood and get rid of the bark off of there too. Now I know this wood looks kind of rough, but by the time, and I cut it all thick, it's all at least an inch thick. So uh, once I run it through my planer and my joiner, my joiner and planer, then uh, I'll have this stuff <laughs> flat as a board. All right, well, that's, uh, that's kind of doing a little overview here of what's going on. Let me get my camera. All right, now, this thing is stainless steel, and during the summer, during the summer, this, it gets very, very hot, okay? And that, it's insulated, but, but uh, once, once it gets hot on the inside, that insulation will help me keep it hot. And, uh, but I've got air holes here, and that's not to let heat out, it's to let moisture out. Uh, but as the heat draws in and and the hot air goes out with the moisture it draws in more air from the bottom and it, that air supposedly will be drier and as it as it comes up through the the system it takes more moisture and out of the system uh, what I plan on doing with this thing a little bit later once I, once I can get one is I'll put a little space heater right down here in the very bottom uh, if I can find a space heater that'll keep it around or that can even get to about 120 degrees uh, that's about where I want it about 120 to 150 and that'll kill any bugs or anything that's in that's in the wood as it dries it also so uh, but anyway that's my kiln and uh, you know I've got a couple of improvements that I will make later but that's it that's basically it. That'll dry wood just like it is. All right. Well, I'll see you in a few minutes. About 120 degrees right now. And uh, it's only been closed up for about uh, 20 minutes, I guess. All right. Okay, well, I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I asked me about milling lumber and stuff like that. And, uh, 
And I was already gonna do my video on my kiln on the building in. So uh, I just kind of integrated the two. And uh, I hope we found it informative also. Just remember, quarter sawn wood is always, the grain runs perpendicular to the face. And uh, if that's what you want, you know, that's what you look for. You can find it everywhere. You can find it at, you know, the big stores, uh, stuff like that. But it'll be mixed in with the uh, with the plain sawn wood also. Uh, so if you're looking for quarter sawn, you'll actually have to check the ends yourself uh, to get that. Uh, if you know people that have a, that own a sawmill, the uh, the uh, wood misers and all the other sawmills, uh, you can have them cut it for you. Uh, usually. They'll cut it a, a whole lot cheaper than you can find it at a lumber yard. Uh, I had a uh, thousand board feet of oak cut up by a, uh, by a guy that owns a sawmill and he charged me $200. There's no way you can go anywhere and buy oak, a thousand board feet for $200. If there is, write in the comments below because I want to know where it's at. Uh, but anyway, that's how you can uh, quarter saw wood. That's one method for doing it. And, uh, and that's an overview of my kiln. Of course, uh, I will be adding some type of heat source into it. I've seen people use light bulbs. I've seen people use uh, heaters and things like that. All you really have to do is keep it hot inside. Right now, I can use the sun to keep it hot in there because it's stainless steel and uh, Right now, you can't touch the outside of it without getting burnt, and it'll get very hot on the inside also. But uh, but I will be looking for a heat source for it. If anybody has any suggestions, uh, let me know. I thought about using a light bulb, but I don't know how to turn it off uh, at a certain temperature. I want to be I want it to be able to maintain a certain temperature. So if anybody knows what I need to do that. I really appreciate it if you would uh, let me know. And uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And I'm about to get started doing some turnings. I've got some. Uh, I've got a craft show coming up in about a month. It's the only show that I do every year. And uh, I'm going to go over some of the things that I'm going to be making for that also. Uh, and there'll be more arts and crafts type uh, type things. Uh, you know, not. Uh, I'm not going to be trying to do any, you know, real art pieces or anything like that. But uh, y'all have a nice day, and uh, 